Hi everyone, I'm Deborah Navarro, and in the spirit of getting to know each other, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about me and where I'm from and how I got started in jewelry, and I hope in turn I'll learn some things about you too. Um, to start off, number one, I am a born and bred Texan. I'm, I love Texas. The whole Texas country culture is something that I grew up in with my mom and dad always listening to country music and going to these little small town festivals and fairs and uh, you know, listening to those live polka bands. I loved it. So I grew up right on the outskirts of Houston and went to Cypress Creek High School, graduating in the class of 87. That makes me 52 years old now. And um, yeah, that's pretty eye-opening when you get in your 50s. That's a big one. But I'm gonna make the best out of these years that you can imagine. Like, I'm so not done, I've got a lot of living left to do. That's what I would always say, I've got a lot of living left to do. It's time to start living it. That's my mantra. And I hope that uh, I hope that comes through in my jewelry. So, uh, after high school, I went to Texas A&M University, Gigum Ags. Um, love my Aggies, that was, those were some great years. I graduated from there in 91 as a speech communication major. I always thought I would go into radio or TV. And when I was finally through with college, um, my, I worked at 93 Q Country Radio. And to, to show you just how like determined I was to work in radio, my first job, just getting my foot in the door, was as the uh, telephone operator for Cactus Jack Tally in the afternoons. And I said, I'm gonna take that $7 an hour part-time job and I'm gonna turn that thing into something. And that's just what I did. I just went in and was the best telephone answerer there was. And uh, slowly, I must have grown on them, grown on the powers that be and worked my way into a full-time job. When I left at the age of 28, I was a promotion and marketing director and uh, really, really having a really great career so far. But then I met my husband. I met this nice, sweet, average, regular guy from Wichita, Kansas, while I was on a work trip in um, at a vacation destination, I think in Cabo or something, uh, something like that. Um, but so I met this guy and he really made an impression on me. He was down to earth and uh, funny. And uh, next thing you know, I'm quitting my job and moving to Wichita, Kansas for some guy. And <laughs> everyone thought I was crazy, which I probably was, but it might be the best craziest thing I've ever done. Because here I am married for 21 years and um, you know, finding Wichita to be a very nice home. So, um, still, like, how do you, how do I make the jump from country music or radio to fine jewelry? Especially since no one in my family ever really wore any jewelry. Um, yeah, it just, I don't know. I never really thought that much about it. I mean, I loved my costume jewelry, and I've always loved big earrings. Flashback to any high school days and I'm wearing some big old earrings. But um, as far as fine jewelry, so what I was doing, I was uh, cutting some commercial for some of the clients and um, one of them was opening a new jewelry store and I was his voice. And he asked me if I wanted to come work part-time for him. So I didn't know anything about jewelry. I told him so and he said, you can learn. So I gave it a shot. And the minute I walked in there, got behind that counter, I knew there was something special about jewelry. That's some little secret that I didn't know. And jewelry is special and it's emotional and you really connect to it and you buy it for, for reasons. Some of them are emotional, some of them are achievement oriented, some are for, um, for union with a person. I, there, there's so many reasons to buy jewelry and so many nuances to jewelry and gemstones and quality and I just uh, a whole world opened up for me so I thought I'm gonna jump you know full force in, into this and let this be my new career so I went back to school um, got my distance education from GIA 
Um, so now I'm a GG graduate homologist and then uh, moved uh, to a new store, Randy Cooper's Fine Jewelry, and she joined the American Gem Society. So through AGS, I also learned uh, the science of appraising, the methodology of appraising, which was an, another really cool aspect of jewelry. Taught me a lot too. But there was that one thing that I just kept sort of dancing around but never doing, and that was the artistic side of jewelry, designing jewelry. And I had a million excuses uh, why I couldn't do it. Well, I, I couldn't take a college course on it. I could take like a the silversmithing class, which I did. And this was one of like my first rings. Doesn't that just, I mean, look so me? So anyway, um, but what I wanted to do, I knew I'd be taking that silversmithing class for years before I could produce the kind of jewelry I wanted to do. And uh, I was really stuck in my life at that time. And I was getting, I was in my 40s and I, I wasn't doing that thing. I wasn't feeling that magic. I wasn't learning anything new. And um, I don't know, I think we all, all get to that point. So join me next week and I'll tell you how uh, I went from not just working in jewelry, but to taking the very scary leap of faith into designing jewelry and starting this business. So tell me what, uh, what was your childhood sort of dream when you were growing up, that thing you wanted to be when you grew up? And I, my answer was always, I wanted to be an artist. And, um, and I actually am now, so it's really, really feels fulfilling to be doing this. But what was that thing that, that you said you would do? And are you doing it? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you next time.